everybody, and welcome to New Year, New Start. We're sorry to be a few minutes late. We had a couple of technical difficulties right at noon. Uh, that always happens, right? Well, anyway, thanks for joining us. Um, my name is Elisa McCain, and this is Lisa Sertinovic, CPA, and we are with Texas Accountants and Lawyers for the Arts. And I'm just going to quickly tell you that if you're not familiar with us, our signature program is one-on-one -on -one matching of attorneys and accountants with artists and nonprofit organizations that are considered low income. For more information about that, you can check out our website at talaarts.org, T-A-L-A-R-T-S.org that you can see on the top of your screen. I also wanted to tell you about a couple of upcoming seminars that we have. On February 1st at noon, there's going to be a seminar on the Copyright Claims Board. If you're not familiar with the Copyright Claims Board, it's a new body that is going to be able to help you enforce your copyright without having to file a lawsuit. So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in protecting your copyright or you think someone has infringed your copyright, it would probably be a, a good hour to sit in. It's a nationwide seminar with our colleagues with Volunteer Lawyers for the Arts across the country, and they're going to tell us about this new federal program to enforce your copyright. And we also have a legal line coming up on February 7th from 530 to 730. You can call from anywhere in Texas and talk to an attorney during that time. So if there's some burning legal question, be sure and give us a call and we'll help you out. Um, if you want to know more about our upcoming seminars, including an upcoming Art of Taxes with Lisa and Kathy Plo coming up uh, at the end of February, please sign up for our newsletter and you can sign up on the website, clicking on any page and you'll see on the right hand sidebar a place to sign up for the newsletter. So I'm going to turn it over to CPA Lisa Sertinovic, who's going to tell us how to make the most out of 2023. Thank you. Hey, y'all. Uh, again, my name is Lisa Sretanovich, and I am the Velocity Detective. I'm a volunteer accountant with uh, Texas Accountants and Lawyers for the Arts, and uh, it's, it's the beginning of a new year, and one of the things that can be overwhelming is trying to get your head wrapped around, oh my gosh, how do I get all of my ducks in a row for taxes so that I can I can actually get this year going a little bit more uh, strategically rather than just completely flying by the seat of my pants. And so uh, today we're going to walk through a little bit more of a workshop than, than just straight up education, right? So uh, Ron, if you could make sure to put the ability to download this uh, PDF into the chat. That would be absolutely fantastic. It is a, a Google, uh, a, a PDF that will be in a, in a Google Drive where you can download it so that you can follow along. If you are not able to do that today, maybe you're um, not in a situation that ha you have that ability, I'm sure that uh, we can get you that link uh, afterwards just uh, make sure to communicate with us so that we know that you want it. So uh, meanwhile, if if you can't, then just pull out a, a blank piece of paper, right? Uh, and, and, and a pen or a paper and, and a pencil. Uh, or, or put your mobile device on just a note section and write down so a few things from this as we as we go through here. Uh, Ryan, why don't you bring up the PDF so that we can follow along? So today is going to be really about getting started for the new year with um, with a, a, a new enthusiasm and a strategy for moving throughout the year. In other words, we're going to have a, a plan of action. That's, that's a plan to do something in order to achieve this overall main goal, right? So let's back up even a step before this and make sure that we already have our vision, mission, and values set in place. So that's kind of like the whole real reason that you're in business in the first place. And you might even step back from that and go, well, I'm not even sure I am in business. So let's even start there, right? The IRS says that 
if you exchange goods or services for compensation, that's usually money, right? Uh, with the intention to make a profit, then guess what? You are in business. So if in 2023, you want to start putting together um, some things in order to get to the point where you can exchange goods or services, well, guess what? You are already on your way to being in business. You do not have to have an LLC in place to be in business. You can simply be a sole proprietor and file a Schedule C on your federal personal tax return. This means that, no, you don't have to have an LLC. You don't have to have a DBA. You can just be simply having the intention to be in business. And in the United States, that means you are. And if that's the case, you want to have a strategy. So the IRS says you're in business if you exchange goods or services for compensation when you really want to make a profit. So we want to think about, well, what do we want to be in business for? In the case of visionating, that's my business, it's to make sure that every business is pursuing their passion. That's really what I want for my business to achieve. That's the bigger lofty reason why it exists. Well, the how I'm going to do it is my mission. And I'm going to do that by empowering entrepreneurs to create a thriving business while they have time to focus on their family. And the values that my business has around it are family, time, and collaboration. Now, once you identify those elements, your vision, the real reason that you want to be in business anyways, the mission, that's how you're going to achieve that, and the values around that, well, then we can start implementing these strategy components. All right, we're going to spell strategy using the acronym so that we can keep all of these pieces kind of in our head, right? We're going to summarize by looking in the rear view mirror of our vehicle and we want to look at last year. We want to look at the, the last period and reflect on what happened. We also want to make sure that our taxes are kind of going to be aligned uh, right away. Here it is January. Taxes, if we are a sole proprietor, are due on April 15th. What other taxes do you need to know about? When you know what they are, you can have that strategy in place to make sure that you've got everything aligned to meet those deadlines. We want to reconcile our records so that we have confidence that what we're reporting on our taxes is complete and accurate. On the accounting side, we want to make sure that we get this spending plan in place so that we have a clear path of where our money is coming in and where it's going out. In addition to that, we want to make sure that we have the time scheduled and allocated to make sure that we're implementing the strategy. We're not just flying by the seat of our pants. We really want this to be an organized process. And we want to ensure that we execute it. Again, setting that plan and allocating that time helps make sure that we can meet the goals of prioritizing our business. The rest of life is never going to not be there. But when we actually have a goal of getting our business in the top portion of those priorities, we have a better opportunity to ensure that our strategy is going to be executed. And why do we want to do all of this? Well, because it's your business. Again, the whole idea of being in business is to create a profit. What do we want to do with that profit? 
We want to put it in our back pocket so that we can pay ourselves to cover our rent, our food, our vacations, our family time, right? You deserve it. This is your business and it's really meant to be a vehicle to allow you to do that thing that you love to do, produce art, to enjoy the, the passion that you have and get paid for it. So by having a strategy in place that accounts for all of the letters of strategy, we can really make sure that it gets executed. Right, so now we're gonna jump into the more workshop piece of this, right? So each page has a different thing that we're going to do. The first one is summarize, right? Again, get out that pen or that pencil. If you're a little bit more tech like I am, I'm going to open up the notes section on my mobile device and I'm going to list out some things that as I'm looking at last year, one of the things I want to list out is one big win that my business had last year. I want to celebrate, all right? So let's say that you haven't even thought about starting your business yet. Well, guess what? You are here today. That is a celebration about your business. Let's say that you, um, you know, I mean, the last several years have been a real struggle for artists and the art community. Now that we're a little bit more in person, did you actually have an in-person gig that you were able to attend? Were you able to go to a, a farmer's market and sell some of your artwork? Put that down as a celebration. Write down at least one celebration that we can, we can clap about right now. Go ahead, write it down right now. Okay, did you do it? Yes? Yay. All right. All right. Then as again, we're looking at last year. We also want to make sure that we take advantage of anything that we maybe didn't do the best at and learn from that thing. So what is one thing you could have improved upon last year? Well, maybe, maybe, you know, tax season is coming up and right now, you don't even have a pile of receipts. You know that they're scattered here and there, but so one of the things you might be able to improve on is your accounting records, or maybe you um, want to take uh, another course on advertising and marketing because you know you didn't really do that great of a job with that last year. Go ahead and, and write down again, one area that you might feel that your business could use some improvement. Again, if you haven't even started your business yet, well, where could you improve? Uh -huh. You could start it. Yay, right? Uh, remember that at Texas Accountants and Lawyers for the Arts, one of the things that we provide artists is the ability for them to utilize legal services to get your business going. You can utilize the, the accounting side of things to help you get your accounting records set up. So go ahead and put down one thing that you could improve upon as you're reflecting on last year. Okay, now take a moment to celebrate. Say, Yay, Lisa, I did it. Everybody, come on, now clap. All right, good job, you guys. All right, so that was S. The T stands for taxes. What we want to think about here is what taxes do you need to know about so that you can, again, strategize for a plan on when they are actually due so that you're not scrambling at the last minute. For the IRS, 
the 2023 tax season has the 1040 tax return due on April 18th. Now, I know that normally it's due on the 15th, but uh, the 15th happens to fall on a holiday or on a weekend. And then, uh, uh, I'm sorry, it falls on a holiday and therefore uh, it's going to be pushed off until April 18th, all right? So, hey, you get a couple extra days to get that filed. So if, you're, if you are a sole proprietor and you're gonna file a Schedule C, you have a couple of extra days. Uh, if you want to extend your return, normally it's due on October 15th, uh, you would have until October 16th this year to do it. Remember also that if you are a sole proprietor, this includes a limited liability company filing a Schedule C as a disregarded entity, that your due date is January 17th, for your fourth quarter estimated tax payment. Also, in the state of Texas, you have annual franchise taxes where the report is due April 15th, unless, of course, it falls on a holiday or weekend. Um, now, keep in mind that if you are a sole proprietor, you don't have a franchise tax return. But if you are an LLC or any other entity type, such as a partnership, a corporation, that sort of thing, you then, yes, you will have to file at least the report. Now, you may not owe any taxes, but you have to file the report. In addition to that, remember that Texas requires businesses to pay what they call personal business property tax. If you own actually real estate, in your business, then you'll also have to pay real estate property taxes. But this business personal property taxes, it's due to the county that you live in. And uh, the county doesn't send you a reminder that this is due. Well, the deadline for filing that rendition is April 15th. There's a whole slew of other taxes that you need to be aware of sales tax, payroll tax, excise tax, value added tax, <gasps> so many. Well, Texas Accountants and Lawyers for the Arts is uh, going to have another webinar specifically dedicated to the art of taxes. Sign up for that webinar so that you can make sure that you fully understand which taxes you need to be filing and when they are due. If you already know what those are, list them right now. If you don't know, then put a note for yourself to sign up for that webinar. Go ahead, do it now. All right, the R in strategy stands for reconcile. Well, what do I mean by that? That means I want you to gain control of your finances in your business by making sure that you, one, have a separate business and credit card account for your business from your personal bank and credit card. Uh, there's this term called co-mingling of funds that the IRS does not want you to do. What does that mean? That means that it does not want you to pay for business expenses out of your personal pocket. And it also does not want you to pay for personal expenses out of your business funds. Well, what if you get paid in cash, right? My husband is um, a music producer. And back in the day, he worked for... Uh, the parish downtown Austin as a sound engineer and every gig he would get paid in cash and sometimes on his way home from uh, from that gig at you know 2 30 in the morning he would get a little bit hungry so you know what he might do is stop by the pizza place and grab some pizza 
And he's like, in, originally in his head was thinking, well, I just got paid and I am hungry. I should be able to use this cash to buy my pizza. Well, ideally what you would do is go run to the ATM, deposit that cash into your business bank account, and then to take it out of your personal bank account or use your personal debit card to buy that pizza. In other words, you really, really want to separate even the cash, uh, not just what goes in and out of your bank and credit cards. In addition to that, you want to reconcile your accounting records to make sure that everything that is on your bank business statement and the statement for your bank, your business credit cards are, are in your accounting records and that everything that is on your accounting records is also on those statements. Um, one of the problems that I see really often when people start to use something like QuickBooks or Xero or Wave Apps, which are really great tools to help with your accounting, that they tend to have a lot of duplicated entries. Sometimes uh, when you pull information in from your bank, you might also enter it manually and not use the matching feature that tends to have duplicates. Well, well, what will that do? Well, that means when you start to look at the reports, you'll have two of those charges for pizza, not just one. And well, you know, you're trying to watch your weight, so uh, you wouldn't have had two pieces of pizza, right? So you don't want to try and take duplicate uh, expenses because that's going to say to the IRS that, hey, you've got too many expenses that you're trying to take. In addition to that, you can't just use the statements for your accounting. You have to have what the IRS calls contemporaneous documentation in order to take those tax deductions. So you want to make sure that you have those receipts. Now, we talked earlier about having them kind of scattered all over the, the house and the, and the studio and some in your office or maybe in this giant shoe box that you have. Um, you can have that, but it's a little bit easier if maybe you just take a picture with your phone and save it to maybe a OneDrive or a Google Docs. That's going to be a little bit more organized and the IRS is perfectly fine with electronic copies. Uh, make sure that you also have detailed logs for things like your mileage. So again, the R is for reconcile. So at the bottom of this, this is kind of a bookkeeping checklist. Make sure that all of your bank accounts are reconciled. Check. Make sure that all of your credit cards are reconciled. Check. And make sure that your all of the expenses that you paid for um, personally, like maybe you actually did use your personal debit card to pay for something. Well, put that on an expense report and reimburse yourself. That's one way to handle it. The other way to handle it is as a, a sole proprietor, you can uh, count that as a capital contribution. So make sure that you have all of your receipts and that they're organized, right? Maybe this year you want to implement something other than that shoe box. Well, you can do it on something as simple as Excel or as complex as something like QuickBooks or Wave Apps. And again, make sure to utilize Tala as one of your resources. Uh, we'll continue to have educational webinars like this on how to get things set up a little bit better, as well as um, don't, don't forget that you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with an accountant to help you get that organized. All right, now let's talk a little bit about accounting. 
one of the ways that you can make sure that you're looking proactively, strategically into uh, your incoming cash and outgoing expenses is to include a spending plan in your accounting. What, what do I mean by that? Well, what I want you to do is list out all of the expenses that you know that are coming up in the period that you're looking at. Let's just look at right now we're already part of the way through January. So let's just look at February. What are all the expenses that you know that you're going to have to pay for already because you've got a pretty good crystal ball in February? Well, list them all out. Now, what cash are you expecting to get in in February? Are you going to, do you already have a grant coming in? We'll put that down. Uh, do you already know that you're going to go to a farmer's market and that you're going to take 17 paintings with you? If that's the case, expect that you're going to go ahead and sell one of those paintings while you're there and put that down. Then you're going to know, oh, well, one painting isn't going to cover all of those costs. I need to sell two in order to cover all of those costs. Put that down now. Now you know that you're going to have to sell two. You also want to think about on a spending plan, those things that aren't absolutely positively due in February, right? So think about, well, for example, uh, in my business, I use Zoom a lot to communicate with my customers. And I have to pay that once a year, but it's not due until October. Well, it's $120 a year. That makes it about 10 bucks a month. I want to save up $10 a month for that future expenditure. So now I've got a strategy for paying for it in advance. And when I get the bill, I'm not freaking out trying to figure out how I'm going to pay for it. The other big thing I want you to think about is your owner compensation. And what do I heck do I mean by that? Well, uh, you remember when my my husband was leaving parish with that wad of money in his pocket and he's thinking, I just got paid. I can spend this. Well, if he was thinking about a spending plan first, he would really think strategically about the cash that he just got knowing that it had to pay for some of the expenses that were coming up in his business. And he wanted to make sure he paid himself. That needs to be like your highest priority is paying yourself. But you need to make sure that you're covering the expenses of your business too. So in this worksheet, we want to think about how much money we need to spend next month how much money we're getting in, and how much we want to save for the future. In addition to that, we want to make sure that it's documented. We can kind of sort of do it in our head if we don't have that many expenditures, but as our business grows, doing it in our head gets a lot more complicated. In addition to that, I don't want to hold it right here when really what I want to happen between these two ears is more creativity. If I've actually documented this plan, then I have the opportunity to allow my brain the freedom to be more creative. So by taking the time, the strategy to actually document this, I free up myself to be more available to be creative. All right. Now that kind of led into, well, I don't have time to document all that, Lisa. Well, again, one of the things uh, that we're going to be doing at Tala is uh, presenting you with another webinar that you can attend. But that means that you have to allocate that energy to be able to attend that webinar to strategize to have time to be creative. So the, the beauty of making sure that you allocate your time appropriately 
is that that gives you the ability to have that energy even when you really don't want to do it, like accounting or taxes or even attending some of those webinars where, oh, well, I'd rather be singing my songs or, or learning how another, another chord progression, right? But without that plan, you're still flying by the seat of your pants. So some of the ideas on making sure that you have that time is learning how to say no. Sometimes it's no to, oh, let's go out and party tonight because, well, partying tonight isn't the problem. It's that you're going to be kind of dragging butt the next day. So when you are really focused on your business, learning how to say no politely can actually give you more time in order to do your business. Another way to make sure that you have that time is to get it on your calendar right now. For example, that webinar that's coming up on the art of taxes, go put it on your calendar right now. Uh, some of the other ways are, are creating um, habit stacks. That's where, let's say that you're uh, also really big into fitness and you, uh, my husband right now, is, is uh, training to run a marathon. So right after he gets done running, he's... He's really excited because he's pumped up about doing this marathon. And one of the ways that he can set aside time to make sure that his business is working properly is to listen to a podcast while he's running. Wow, what an awesome way to habit stack that. So I want you to write down right now one way that you are going to be available to do this strategy. All right, so having a strategy is great. A lot of us, you know, in, in January, we put together, uh, or, or we, we have these uh, New Year's resolutions and we're really pumped about them. And then they kind of sort of fall by the wayside, especially about now in January. It's about three weeks in and, you know, we tried it for a couple of, of days and then, well, regular life came along and said, uh, you know. So the execution of, of having, of actually doing this, the strategy is so important. You can't just fill out this, this worksheet here and then put it on the top shelf and let it collect dust. In order for it to make an impact into your business, you actually have to get it into action. So some ways to ensure that your strategy is executed is to compare things. For example, if you've got that spending plan in place, well, make sure that you compare it every single month to what you actually did. So let's say that you wanted to go ahead and, and um, sell those two paintings at that farmer's market so that you could pay for all of your expenses this month. Well, how many did you sell? Oh, oh, you sold three? Well, first of all, I wanna congratulate you. Yes, let's celebrate that win. But in addition to that, you know, what other expenses came up that you hadn't planned for? Um, maybe you went over on your data plan because while you were there at the, at the farmer's market, um, you were watching a video on how to strategize. Congratulations. But uh, that went over your, your, spent, your plan right? And now you've got a little bit extra cash that has to go out the door. Well, maybe then you should look at your plan. Again, it's that comparison so that you know what to do better next time. Uh -huh. Also, make sure that you communicate that strategy to other people. Uh, for example, having a, 
a coach that can help you work through this strategy and make sure that you stick to it. Or gosh, there are several of you that are watching this live right now or are going to watch the, the recording later. Look and see who else is out there that is interested in having a strategy for their business. Go out and reach out to them and say, hey, I want you to be my accountability partner. Why don't we meet up once a month? for 10 minutes just to say, yes, I stuck to my strategy or man, I'm struggling a little bit this month. Um, I, I can't seem to, to get ahead of the game. What are you doing? Are, are you also struggling? Because we can help each other by being accountable to each other. You can even just pick one goal from your strategy, like just pick the T for time to map out that you have time. Just do one a month. So write down in this section one way that you're going to make sure that you execute your strategy. Oh, goal setting, right? There's a number of different ways that we can set goals. And um, one of the things that I want you to focus on in this part is not so much what goal you should have for your business, but that your business should be prioritized among all of the other things in your life. Think about the fact that you've got me time, and that is extraordinarily important. But you also have other things that go on in your life. You have potentially a, a full-time job that you have to deal with. You also have, well, gosh, your family. Maybe, maybe like me, you have grandchildren or you have just a brand new baby or you just got engaged or you have, you have other friends that want you to go out with them. You definitely need to think about your spirituality and, and, other things like your education, maybe you're a student and, and that falls pretty high on, on your radar of what's important. Well, what I want you to do is rank these items, your alone time, your business, your education, and where does your business fall in these things? How important is it to you to make this business make a profit? because you don't want it to fall down too far if it's that important to you. On the other hand, these other things are very valuable and you want to make sure that you don't allow your business to take over things like spending time with your family. So again, rank these things. They're currently in alphabetical order but rank your business and see where it falls to make sure that you really understand your goal for your business and where it falls within the rest of your life for this year. So go ahead and rank them. This might take you a little bit of time. So at least put a star on this one and come back to it and really think through where your business falls. The why in strategy is for you. I mean, you, all right? The whole reason that your business exists is to make a profit. Remember back at the very beginning, we said that the exchange of goods or services for compensation with the intention to make a profit is the reason that the IRS says a business is out there. Well, as the business owner, you're entitled to that profit. Yes, entitled to it. Because why? You took the risk to take away time from all of those other things that we just discussed to focus on your business. In addition to that, you spent your time and energy, that thing that, that pushes you to produce this product or service that 
you're presenting to the world. Well, you should get compensated for that too. What I want you to do is understand how much you should get out of your business. Well, sometimes that's a little bit hard. You're going, well, I'm just starting out and I have to put everything back into it because um, it, it, it's just not making enough money to pay for those expenses that you talked about earlier, Lisa. But I want you to focus on the fact that you are the one that is getting it out there and you need to get compensated for that. So let's walk through how much you want to take from the business. All right. <coughs> uh, now, how much you want is all very, very, very personal. You have to look at your own personal needs uh, outside of the business. For example, how much you need for rent, how much you need for your vacations, how much you need to just put food on the table, how much you need to pay for your niece's graduation present, right? How much you need is, is really, really personal, but you, un, you definitely need to understand the difference between how much you absolutely need and how much you really, really want, right? Well, they could be somewhere in between, right? A need might be, uh, well, I need to pay for gas and my rent. Okay, well, how much is that? And can the business currently afford it? Well, on your spending plan, go ahead and put that down at the top of your spending plan, even before things like the, the paint and the canvas and the new software that you need to do your photography, all right? Um, go ahead and put that at the top because if your business can't pay for your needs, then we need to think about what in the business needs to change so that it can. That's the part about the strategy that is absolutely so important. Once you finally get those needs down, then think about what you want. My example here is perhaps you have a full-time job and you have the side hustle right now that you would really like to build big enough so that it can take over your full-time job so you don't have to work for that boss anymore. You can be your own boss. Well, that's a want. Go ahead and put how much more you need in order to make that happen. <clears throat> You'll need to put that on your spending plan too. Now, if that's way, way pie in the sky for you, I understand, stop at the needs. You really need to understand how much your business needs to pay you in order to strategize about how many sales you need to make. How many pieces of art do you need to sell in order not just to pay the bills for the business, but to pay you because you are what makes the business. Now, when we start to think about that, well, go right back straight up to the top of the strategy and start over with summarize and think about what you did in the prior period what that celebration was and how you could have done something better so that we can pay you going forward. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, Ron, take the, um, uh, yeah, thank you. So what I want to know is, do you have any questions? Hi, Lisa. We don't have questions in the chat right now, but I think we may have neglected to tell them to write questions in the chat. So I don't remember saying that. So that could be my fault. Um, if you're out there watching and you have a quick question, you can pop it in the chat and we'll check it out. And if you don't have any questions right now, well, 
we will be putting this out uh, to be viewed later, go ahead and put them and we can address them at a later point in time. Um, again, if you don't have the download, the PDF with all of these steps on how to develop a strategy for your business or how to get it implemented, we can get that to you. You can also just do it on a straight up piece of paper. Um, and again, we've got so many really awesome tools and, and educational things coming up <coughs> in the near future. You're going to want to sign up for those. And I, and I just wanted to say though, for those of you watching, please come back and see Lisa and Kathy Plo, Houston based CPA that have done our art of taxes for the last few years are going to do them together. If you're in Austin, we will be at the Dougherty. And if you're anywhere else in Texas, you can watch online. And that is going to be, I believe, February 21st. And we will be announcing that this week. So check your email and register for that. And please come back and join us. And as always, if you have questions or like to talk to Tala, you're welcome to call us or email info at talarts.org and we're happy to answer questions and hopefully we would be able to help you out and i think that's it any last parting wisdom words lisa well put a strategy in place so, thank you so much and you have a good afternoon with the rest of your day